Hi friends and welcome to our next episode on Finvest, the Friday's Fire Chats. We have been uh, looking at the last couple of episodes on what are the different ways of having income and where our money goes, the expenses predominantly, and how we can carefully plan it out using proper budgeting techniques. Now, very often when I go for seminars and workshops, a lot of them have this question, a very, very common question. They ask us, can you tell us what is a good savings product? Where should I invest money? And most often I see people using these two words, savings and investments, interchangeably. And many times, in fact, I ask this question, a lot of them, if savings and investments mean the same, or is there any difference between the two? And uh, most often, People say that, sir, there is a difference. Savings are different, investments are different. But if I ask them, what is the difference between the two, they are not too sure about it. Most often, the kind of uh, answers that I get for this question is that people say that savings are more safe. Okay, looks very synonymous, right? Savings are more safe. If I ask them, safe from what? Now, what do you mean by safety? They say that, sir, it is not prone to risk. Now, are you sure it is not prone to any risk? If I prod further, then say, no, risk is less. Okay. Now, when we're talking about risk, what do you mean by risk over here? Are you talking about the capital loss or capital erosion or lack of growth in the capital, meaning the growth is there, but it is not sufficient enough to my expectation. That's also a risk. Or do you mean to say that probably the interest does not come, which is called as a credit risk or a default risk? Or it is subject to volatility. You now, which of these risks are you talking about? There are many more risks also that probably I can go on listing around. But if I ask them which risk are you referring to, many a time there is no clear-cut answer to this question. Most often people say I am talking about capital risk. So do you mean to say that keeping money in the bank is the safest way out? They say yes. But then there have been uh, situations, not in India, but then definitely... Overseas, where we have seen cases of bank runs. In India, we have also seen cases where it has become illiquid. So most often people say that, sir, savings means it is very liquid. Investments might not be very liquid. Okay. So when you're talking about liquidity, you mean ease of conversion to cash, right? So there have been instances in India itself where money kept in a bank savings account was subject to certain restrictions on withdrawals. There are cases where the money that was kept was locked up for a certain period of time. There are also products, if you're looking at, for example, a public provident fund, PPF, people say that it is illiquid. But then, yes, for a couple of years, it is illiquid. But after that, there are conditions where you can withdraw, subject to certain limitations. So, when you're talking about liquidity, it is also not crystal clear. Probably, the next thing that people say is that, sir, savings are for short term. And investments are for long term. Now, let me tell you a story over here of a friend of mine who had gone to the uh, heart of trading in India, which is the city of Ahmedabad. He was invited there for an investor awareness program. And he had this question to the investors over here on uh, investment horizon. So he was asking them, what is the period of investment when you're saying the short term? How long is your short term? And how long is your long term? Very interesting question. Uh, this is way back in 2007. The answer to this question from the investors was that, sir, if I buy, probably I'm talking about a trading community over here. Probably I buy in this month. And by the end of this contract month, okay, contract month, I sell it off. Then it is a long term. Suppose I do a BTSD call. Okay, people who are in the trading uh, sort of hobby or business, they will understand this definition of BTSD. Today, it has reduced, but then it was very, very prominent at that point in time, 2007. Buy today, sell tomorrow. You buy the stock today, tomorrow, you sell it off. Or people do intraday trading. So the definition at that point in time in 2000 was, sir, if I do intraday trading or BTSD, call I buy in the beginning of the week and sell it off before the week, uh, weekend itself. Then they are short term. Huh? Short term. If I buy in this month and probably by end of the month or the next month, I sell it up, it is long term. Okay. Fast forward two more years. 
and the same friend of mine had visited for another investor awareness program in the same city okay he was asking the same question to the investors there and you know what was the answer very interesting huh? the investors over there were saying sir if i buy and i enjoy the fruits of my investment in my lifetime it is short term but if i buy and my children and my grandchildren okay if they enjoy the benefits of my investment it is long term are yaar just two years forward now what happened the entire mindset of people had gone for a 360 degree change that's because of what happened in the markets from 2007 to 2009 so those of you who were in the share markets will remember those turbulent times which has given lot of lessons so there is no clear cut answer also to the short term or long term but most often people say sir short term is less than one year couple of them say short term is less than 3 years now who gives this definition predominantly this one year or a two year or a three year comes from income tax department boss because they have classified the capital assets as short term capital asset or long term capital asset for taxation of the capital gains nothing otherwise okay there are a lot of people who hold certain assets for shorter period if i ask them what is shorter period it could be one year for some people it will be one decade it again depends on the profile of the client depending on his age the mindset the background the family background economic background and all that so if i have to go back to the question that we started what is the difference between saving and investment is it on the risk fa fa factors no is it based on the horizon time horizon of investment no no clear cut answer on that so if i have to give you an answer what i believe ideally as soon as we earn income okay let's say i earn 100 rupees what do i do i immediately take care of my day to day requirements of life that is for a basic lifestyle what are my essential requirements i will take care of all those expenses including emi blah 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 right so let's say about 60 rupees is gone what is the balance 40 that i am left with what is the balance amount that i have after taking care of all the expenses is what we call as savings an alternate word it is surplus income or disposable income got it right so if i earn 100 rupees i immediately take care of all my expenses let's say 60 is spent on all my essentials requirements liabilities which have to be taken care of respect to em my house rent blah 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 and what is left around after spending is what is called as savings now what are you going to do with this depending on again the person's profile the mindset and needs and his goals what he is going to do with this 14 to change somebody will go put this money in a bank rd or a post office or they may put some private kit schemes or they will go and buy gold or a silver maybe save something aside for a land purchase or they may channelize it to nowadays very common product for a common man very favorite of the lot which is mutual funds which is definitely picking up a lot and other favorite again as an investment if you are looking at it is for some people shares real estate so if you looking at what are you going to do with this surplus income is what we call as investment so if i have to define what is an investment investment is channelizing your savings productively for your future needs we'll go a little bit deeper about investments at a little later stage but uh, to give you some stats about bharat india currently the savings rate if i have to probably put it as a percentage of our gdp is at the lowest in the last 5 decades yes in the last 50 years we have hit the rock bottom in this financial year that is uh, probably if i 23 if you want the numbers we are at 5.1 percentage of the gdp 5.1 percentage of the gdp which just two years before when corona hit that was fi 21 that is in the financial year 2020 and uh, 21 it was at 11.5 percentage of the gdp the gross savings of indians put together was about 11 and a half percentage of the gdp 
and in financial year 22-23, it has hit a rock bottom at 5.1 percentage. Pretty alarming. Okay. If you are looking at it as a savings with respect to percentage of the income, like what we had just discussed as an example, if I earn 100 rupees and I spend 40, what is left around is 40 rupees. 40 rupees as a percentage of my income, 100 is 40 percentage. This was as high as 37 percent a decade ago. 2013, it was as high as 36, 37 percent and which is now at just 30 percent, 30 percentage. So average saving as a percentage of the income, let's say I earn 100 rupees as a common man, Amadmi, only 30 rupees is going towards savings or what is left around after my expenditure. That's why we are moving more towards the consumption driven economy. That is also one of the reasons that our GDP is fast growing. Okay. So now you might uh, ask a question, Subhash, all this is fine. Now, can you give us some tips with respect to how can we do things better? How can we channelize our savings better in productive avenues like investments? For that, you will have to watch out for this space for more. Go ahead in the comment section, do share with us what is your savings rate as a percentage of your income. Let us all work together in making India a nation of investors. We have been long, long time known as a nation of savers. It's high time that we are also known as a nation of investors. If you like whatever we have discussed in this video, Go ahead and smash the like button and share this with all your friends and colleagues and relatives. Till we catch up on our next episode, do subscribe to our channel to get the notification. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Jai Hind.